were friends Angela, Andrew, Donnie, Randy, and Rachel. Growing up in Skagit Valley, Washington meant getting their hands dirty. Most of us started working in the fields when we were 12 years old. We literally got on a school bus and rode out to the spinach fields uh, all summer long and rode spinach. They became affectionately known as the Spinach Bus Kids, and throughout high school, their friendships only deepened. We kind of grew up with this idea that we could kind of do anything if we work together. After graduating in 1994, the group went their separate ways, but never forgot their hometown roots. I have a great <laughs> picture of us dressed up as farmers. We had a wheelbarrow and everything, so. A little foreshadowing. <laughs> 25 years later, the group reunited and an idea began to spark. I like to say we went to happy hour and then we bought a farm. Determined to keep their beloved local farms in local hands, Rachel and Angela moved home and this party of five formed Spinach Bus Ventures. And next stop was Tulip Town. Despite not having any formal farming experience, they jumped at the chance to purchase Tulip Town, a 30-acre tulip farm in the heart of their hometown. It seems like you guys could have really done anything together. Why tulips? In Skagit Valley, it's an amazing place to grow anything, but there's nothing more iconic than tulips. This is Tulip Valley. This is a symbol of, of our community. The group immediately got to work planning and planting for their first tulip season and the 100,000 people they were expecting to come for the festival. We generate about 90% of our revenue during the month of April, which is when the tulip festival traditionally has been in Skagit County. But just weeks away from their first bloom. You figure out how to grow tulips and then a pandemic hits. What happens then? We leaned on each other and then we took a deep breath, cleared off the whiteboard and started coming up with ideas. The team quickly had to pivot in order to salvage their season. We started getting calls, hey, since I can't come to your farm to buy tulips, um, could you ship me some? And Tulip Town had never shipped flowers before. So at the <laughs> beginning we were like, oh no, we don't do that. But after like the fifth call, I look at Andrew and I'm like, yeah, we do this. So right. we, we had right. 600 shipping boxes just sitting in the warehouse. We put it online at five o'clock on a Thursday. And by the end of the weekend, we'd sold through all of the boxes. The team also started a Colors for Courage initiative where customers can purchase bouquets to be donated in the community. We delivered to Children's Hospital, police stations, retirement homes where people were shut in. And we did almost 5,000 bouquets. And because people couldn't come to the tulips, they brought the tulips to the people. The last thing we launched was our app. Which you can do take a 360 degree tour um, of our farm, our barn. Though it wasn't the season they expected, the Tulip Towners are already planting seeds for next year. Are there things that you're learning now and doing now that even next year you want to implement even if everything goes back to normal? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure. I don't think that there's anything that we won't do the differently. It seems like this pandemic has helped you realize just how important tulips are to the community. I think we all feel that we came, started Spinach Bus and, and purchased Tulip Town as almost a calling. It kind of picked us. And so the option to walk away or to not put our all in just, it wasn't there. And then you say, hey, I, I can conquer the world. Well, where'd you learn that? The spinach wheels. <laughs> Just so mm. beautiful. The owners of Tulip Town admit it has been a tough year, but they say next year they'll be back better than ever. So, Chanel, we are certainly pulling for them.